Last year, I did this specific video. And with this video, it's actually one of our top 10 most viewed videos on the channel with over 6,000 views. So I thought in this particular time when I'm about to do 24 days of content here on the channel in a row, that I would revisit this video since you guys have been requesting it. What's up, guys? I'm DK Wrestler. And in today's video, I'm going to be talking about the best Funko Pops from every MCU movie, which for this video, I'm going to be starting off with, of course, 2008's Iron Man worked one by one until the newest MCU movie that has been released, which in this case is 2023's The Marvels, which in this case for this video, there's actually three brand new movies that have been added to the list since the last time I did this. So let's get right to it. So starting off with 2008's Iron Man, I have to go with the San Diego Comic-Con 2020 exclusive Stan Lee. This was actually a pop a lot of you guys were talking about how you felt how did you forget about this pop considering I actually did forget about this pop originally on this list I had the Iron Man Mark 1 I believe it was and then I realized that this pop was a part of the Iron Man lineup considering it does say Iron Man on the box and if there was any point of adding a Stan Lee pop to the MCU list it's got to be right here for Iron Man 1 where he's basically looking like Hugh Hefner moving on to 2008's The Incredible Hulk and there's actually no Funko Pops for this and that was the same case with the last video I did is that they never made pops for this considering that Funko Pops were not made until 2010 since this movie was made in 2008 although they could have made a Funko Pop to kind of revisit it whether it's the different MCU anniversary lines but they just never did next up is 2010's Iron Man 2 and the pop I have is the Iron Man in Gantry pop deluxe that also glows in the dark this pop is a previous exclusive and it's also one of those pops that I actually forgot was in the lineup especially because the box does say Iron Man 2 and originally I had the whiplash moments that they did for a Marvel collection Core exclusive, but there's something about this that's really cool, especially with the glow in the dark aspect that I felt was definitely a better pop for Iron Man 2. Moving on to 2011's Thor, and the pop I have is the OG Loki. Now, I believe there was only two pops for this lineup being Thor and Loki, and there's something weird to this day about the way that Thor looks, so at least Loki kind of looked decent, and why I would choose that one over the other one. Next up is 2011's Captain America, the first Avenger, and the pop I have is the Emerald City Comic Con exclusive Captain America Unmasked. Now, I believe originally on this list, I had the moments with Red Skull and Captain America, but with this pop, I always forget how amazing this thing looks. This would have been, I believe, like my number two pick, but then also adding the fact of how valuable this pop is on the secondary market is something that you got to really consider when it comes to the best Funko Pops, especially for a specific movie. So that's why this time around, it's this specific Captain America that is the best pop for 2011's Captain America movie. Next, Next up is 2012's The Avengers, and the pop I chose is the Walgreens exclusive Hulk smashing Loki. Now we're starting to get to the point where it's basically the same pops as I did in the previous video. This pop is absolutely awesome with a very funny moment involved. Next up is 2013's Iron Man 3, and the pop I chose is Deep Space Suit. Now for Iron Man 3, there have only been four pops. I'm not exactly sure if that newly released pop town of Iron Man is considered for this or one of the other ones, but nonetheless, that's still pretty cool but as terms to the four pops, I thought Deep Space Suit was pretty cool, especially because we've seen a lot of Iron Man, and then there's also like the James Rhodes, I believe, for that lineup, but there's something about this Deep Space Suit with that white outfit that just looks really cool. Next up is 2013's Thor The Dark World, and the pop I chose is the Dark Elf. Now, with this lineup, there definitely was more than two pops this time, and I believe there was like four with like a Thor, a Loki, I think maybe Odin was in this lineup, I can't exactly remember, but there's something about the Dark Elf that's just you uniquely different and especially it's more of an obscure character considering that characters like Thor and Loki would probably be more likely talked about when it comes to the other movies compared to this one. Next up is 2014's Captain America the Winter Soldier and the pop I chose is the Amazon exclusive the Winter Soldier aka Bucky Barnes. Now of course there was a whole Winter Soldier lineup made back in 2014 when this movie came out and there was a Winter Soldier pop actually a couple of them but there's something about this one that just is leaps and bounds better when it comes to detail compared to that OG one, hence why I wanted to add this one over those OG ones. But nonetheless, those OG ones are still cool. But this one, when it comes to detail, is much better. Next up is 2014's Guardians of the Galaxy. And the pop I chose is the Glow in the Dark Star-Lord from the Marvel's Collector's Court exclusive box. This pop is really cool. This, of course, is the moment where he has the one stone in his 
his hand. Then you do see the whole effect going on with him and how he almost dies because of that. And they executed it pretty well. I love the idea of the purple glow and especially the spots that they added the whole aspect of the detail involved with the scene. I think they did a great job with this pop. Next up is 2015's Avengers Age of Ultron and the pop I chose is the unmasked Tony Stark. This pop is really cool. Of course, they did do an Iron Man pop where it's in that exact same pose, but I thought I would acknowledge this being one of the first pops, I believe, with Tony Stark, and you actually do see the head molding of what would be Robert Downey Jr., so I do really enjoy that. I think they did one later on as like a 10-inch pop, but of course, not a lot of people care about 10-inch pops. You'd rather have the 4-inch pop. Next up is 2015's Ant-Man, and the pop I chose is the glow-in-the-dark yellow jacket. Of course, there is Ant-Man and then Hank Pym, I believe, in this lineup, but yellow jacket was a pretty cool looking pop and I guess villain in the movie and I thought the glow in the dark aspect definitely made sense since yellow is one of those better colors when it comes to glow in the dark. Next up is 2016's Captain America Civil War and the pop I chose is the target exclusive damaged crossbones. Now I really debated about changing the selection this time around since we do have the newly released Civil War build a scene set so I could have chosen one of those pops but I don't know there's just something about this crossbones that I still think in my opinion with the detail of this that it still is in my opinion the best pop as terms to this movie. Next up is 2016's Doctor Strange and the pop I chose is the San Diego Comic Con 2016 Doctor Strange. This pop is really cool. I believe it was actually the first pop released for the set since the movie I believe did release in the fall later that year and it still holds up to details of today. I really love the detail involved with this pop. Of course he's doing like the whole magic thing with his hand so I think they did that pretty well. If you're gonna look for one Doctor Strange pop out of even all the movies I think this is honestly the one to get. Next up is 2017's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, and the pop I chose is the Emerald City Comic Con exclusive Yondu. One of the most memorable moments from this movie, especially because this was a little bit lackluster in my opinion compared to the first movie. And although there have been new pops, especially that WonderCon exclusive Groot, and you have that Blacklight multi-pack, it just wasn't good enough to possibly take this bottom list, in which why still this time around this Yondu pop in my opinion is the best pop. I'm Mary Poppins, y'all. Next up is 2017 Spider-Man Homecoming, and the pop I chose is the Homemade Suit Spider-Man. Once again, I mentioned this in the last video, and I did mention that the Vulture pops were a close second, and especially that Tony Stark with the Iron Man head was also a very close second to being placed in this list, but there's something about the uniqueness to this Funko Pop to where you can definitely tell that it's not a professionally made suit, hence why I do really enjoy this pop, although this lineup had really banger pops though, so it was difficult to choose the best one for this movie. Next up is 2017's Thor Ragnarok, and the pop I chose is the 10-inch Black Light Hulk. Thor Ragnarok was actually a banger movie, my favorite Thor movie in the MCU, and it was a little bit difficult, but there was something about this Hulk that looked really cool, and I do like the aspect of the different colors they chose in the right spots for the pop. Next up is 2018's Black Panther, and the pop I chose is the Funko Hollywood exclusive T'Chaka. The detail on this pop is really cool. Of course, this was a very difficult one for me because Black Panther is one of my favorite MCU movies, and there's a ton of cool Black Panthers, whether they're masked or unmasked, but there's something about this T'Chaka that looks really awesome, especially with the whole attire involved, and especially the way that the mask looks that just makes it very unique compared to a lot of those Black Panther pops for this movie. Next up is 2018's Avengers Infinity War, and the pop I chose is the Hulk Bust. Now, funny thing about this is that this actually was involved with a deleted scene in the movie. So when this pop released and people watched the movie, they were wondering why they didn't see the scene. And that's because it was a deleted scene and that it never actually made in the movie. But of course, with the thing of deleted scenes, when you get the movie out of the theaters, you obviously could see that scene. And there's something about the uniqueness to where you see Hulk busting out of the Hulk buster and seeing the debris flying everywhere. That makes it so detailed compared to a lot of pops Although, once again, with a huge lineup like Infinity War, there were some really cool pops. Next up is 2018's Ant-Man the Wasp, and I chose the Wasp. There was only, I believe, four pops involved in this lineup, and they never made any, like, exclusives from what I last remember, and Comic-Con exclusives for that matter. So I was very limited, but I thought, let's choose the Wasp. Next up is 2019's Captain Marvel, and the pop I chose is the Flurkin Goose with the Tesseract. This pop is really cool. Goose was kind of the highlight of this movie, because let's face it, Captain Marvel was wasn't really that great of a movie.
although there were some cool pops involving Captain Marvel herself, there's something about Goose that just was really cool, especially this one where you do see like the octopus tentacles grabbing the Tesseract. So I thought that was pretty decent. Next up is 2019's Avengers Endgame and the pop I chose is the previews exclusive Glow in the Dark I Am Iron Man. I feel like this is 90% of people's favorite pop when it comes to this movie, considering that this is the most iconic moment in the movie where he snaps his fingers, says I Am Iron Man. A close second is probably the Captain America with Thor's hammer. Next up is 2019's Spider-Man Far From Home and the pop I chose is the Glow in the Dark Molten Man. I wanted to choose one of the Spider-Man pops, but there's just something about them that just weren't as good as the Homecoming ones. And I thought that the Molten Man was pretty cool, especially because I did have it at one point and the Glow in the Dark aspect to this pop, which was exclusive to GameStop, was really awesome with the way that the orange is and how it pops out, especially with the yellow eyes. Next up is 2021's Black Widow and the pop I chose is Red Guardian. Red Guardian had lots of details in terms of the pop, whether it's the beard, the battle damage outfit, and the fact that, of course, this character is played by David Harbour also takes to an effect. Next up is 2021 Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings, and the pop I chose is the six-inch Great Protector. Like I mentioned in the last video, the Shang-Chi lineup was very lackluster as terms the detail of the characters. A lot of them were just Shang-Chi himself with a different posing, but there's something about this Great Protector pop that had a lot of detail, including the water base involved with it. Next up is 2021's The Eternals, and the pop I chose, I believe, is called Crow, if I'm not mistaken. Now, there weren't that many pops to choose from that I actually liked because, once again, it was a very lackluster lineup of pops that aren't really detailed. They didn't really even sell well in stores. They're having a hard time trying to sell this at Dollaramas here in Canada and probably five below in the States. So that kind of tells you something about how lackluster this lineup is. And the movie was trash. That's at least my opinion. And is probably the worst MCU movie that I have seen. So that takes a lot. But with this Crow Pop, there is quite a bit of detail involved with this. Very obscure compared to the other pops in this set. Next up is 2021 Spider-Man No Way Home. And the pop I chose is the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man. Of course, that being the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. And originally when I did this list, this pop wasn't officially confirmed, but only confirmed at a panel at San Diego Comic-Con. So at the time I was kind of cheating, but I wasn't because we knew this pop was coming out. But now with an official glam shot, as you guys seen, I can officially talk about this pop as a part of this set, and it's just so awesome. Next up is 2022's Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, and the pop I chose is the chase version of Doctor Strange. There is a lot of uniqueness as terms to this pop, especially the colorway that they chose. It kind of looks like an artist series pop without being an artist series pop. There's just something that's really cool about this and that we haven't really seen with many chases before, so I thought that was very unique. Next up is 2022's Black Panther. Or Wakanda Forever, and the pop I chose is Namor. This pop is really awesome. I love the detail. Namor was an awesome character in the movie. You have the water base involved, and although there were some cool pops involved with this set, like the Shuri Black Panther or even the Namor riding the Orca, there's something about this one that just sticks out so much compared to those other ones, especially with the posing. And then once again, that water base that I always love when Funko does that kind of stuff. So next up is 2023's Ant Man the Wasp Quantum Mania. And the pop I chose is the Funko Shop exclusive Ant-Man moments. Now this pop is really cool considering we've never actually had an Ant-Man pop that shows the, I guess, I don't know if metamorphosis is the right word. I actually don't think so, but like kind of the whole aspect of Ant-Man going from human and then shrinking down to ant size. There's never been really a way for Funko to pull that off. Next up is 2023's Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 and the pop I chose is Kraglin. Now this definitely is a very obscure answer for this considering that there are quite a bit of detailed pops. But there's something about Kraglin that compared to the Kraglins we've gotten from volume one and volume two is that this one is so much leaps and bounds better compared to the Kraglins we've gotten in the past, and especially having, of course, that Mohawk thing now that he adopted from Yondu in the previous Guardians movie. And last but not least for this video, it is 2023's The Marvels. And the pop I chose is the moments involving Ms. Marvel, Captain Marvel, and Photon. I believe Photon is the name of this character now, which originally was Monica Rambo. And there weren't too many appealing pops, in my opinion, for this set. So I thought this was really cool, considering that, of course, you have three different characters in this. It shows the different Marvels, of course. So I think that's pretty decent. But at the same time, I haven't seen this movie yet, and I probably won't until 
the movie comes out on Disney+. Plus. But however, if we revisit this video at some time, which would probably be next summer when Deadpool 3 comes out, there probably will be more pops for this movie to be released at a Comic-Con. So maybe one of those pops will take the spot of this list if we were to revisit this again. Anyways, guys, that's gonna be the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know down below what your favorite pops are from these different movies. You don't have to do an entire list, but I know some of you guys have done that in the past and that was really Really awesome but thank you for watching this video and hope to see you guys next time one two three i'm out of here